So speaking of the web portfolio, over the next two weeks, you'll complete it. You began planning it in module one. This week, I've allocated three of the 10 coursework hours to this assignment. I want you to understand how I'm going to evaluate your work. First, your portfolio has to be hosted on a public website. It should be clearly targeted to potential employers. It should include at a minimum an About Me page plus two artifacts from TECM 5191. They should demonstrate competencies needed for your career path be different for different students. Each artifact should include some narrative content that describes the context within which it was created as well as the specific competencies it demonstrates. Some of those must be digital literacies. I'll talk more about the narrative content in the Module 8 overview. Along with the content on your site, I'll evaluate its style or tone and mechanics. You should present yourself as you would in a job interview. That means you can show your personality, but it should be your professional personality. And it also means mechanical flaws like typos or comma splices are simply unacceptable. Third, I'll assess the organization of your site at both the micro level, in other words, on each individual page, and the macro level, navigation within the pages on the site. The bottom line message of each page and the entire site should be easy for a visitor to grasp. You don't want to make the potential employer work hard. Information should be chunked and logically connected. Finally, I'll evaluate the visual design on your site. WordPress includes thousands of design templates or themes that you can use. Choose one that follows visual composition principles. The assignment on Canvas has links to sources that briefly explain these. It's important to understand that there are restrictions on which themes you can select based on the WordPress plan you purchased. In addition, you can only edit the CSS in a WordPress theme if you're using the .org version or if you purchased a premium or business license for the .com version. I want to briefly mention a handy tool. Our students are often disappointed when they want to add web pages to their portfolio but no longer have access to them because they were created on sites that the student doesn't personally own or that the student has abandoned for whatever reason. The Internet Archive has a tool called the Wayback Machine that you can use for free to archive web pages from this course or others that you might want to include in your portfolio in the future. It includes the images and CSS, but it does save only a single page or multiple single pages rather than an entire site. You'll find a link in the portfolio assignment on Canvas. I haven't said anything yet about the importance of the narrative that you create about each artifact in your portfolio, but it's critically important. The recruiting firm Robert Half describe the importance of establishing the context of artifacts in your portfolio in an article that's linked within this assignment on Canvas. One effective way to establish context is to use what's commonly called the STAR method, often described when guiding job applicants to answer interview questions. STAR is an acronym standing for Situation, Task, Action, and Results. Let's take a look at a sample narrative about a portfolio artifact to help you see how you can apply the STAR method to describe its context. We're visiting an actual portfolio site for someone that I don't know, whose name is Clem, and describes himself as a product content strategist. We're looking at one of the artifacts on his site that he chose to represent his content strategy and UX writing skills. You could visit the page yourself at the URL that I'll show you when I complete the discussion. The artifact in this case is a website for an organization called CMX Media. First, I'm going to scroll all the way through the page. Then we'll go back and look at some specifics. There's a quote from someone at the client site. Overview. Defining the challenge. Approach, still in approach, and then finally, outcome. Clem used four level one headings to chunk his narrative. 
Let's go back to overview, which is the first. The narrative in this section mostly describes the situation, the who, what, and when involved when Clem began working on the website for CMX. It also describes a little of Clem's task or why he was involved in the situation. Now we're going to look at the second level heading, defining the challenge. The narrative here mostly describes why Clem was needed. The bullets describe the tasks Clem thought most relevant in his work on the CMX website. So there were no clear audience needs or goals being met by the previous site, not sure if the content was meeting its business objectives. Because the third level one heading is lengthy, we're going to skip ahead to the fourth and final outcome. The narrative here describes the results, the value that Clem's work delivered for the website owner. Note how specific those outcomes or results are. Grew the email list by over 50% in the summer months. Increased weekly traffic to the CMX website by 60% doubled its return visitors. And again, there's another quote from the client. All right, finally, let's go back to the third level one heading approach. It's by far the longest or meatiest portion of content. Just under 50% of the text on the entire page about this artifact or website is included in approach. There are five subheadings and five visuals in this section, and that makes good sense. Clem is selling his skills as an approach to content strategy. Even with a different organization or a different type of website, he would use the tools he mentions, card sorting, Google Analytics, Personas, SEO strategy. He would use all of those with another client. Although Clem doesn't list tools and techniques separately, there are many mentioned. I just called out some of them within the narrative. So I don't want to suggest that Clem's portfolio site is perfect. It might benefit from some editing to make the text more concise and the visual layout more clear. However, the narrative definitely serves as a great example of how the STAR method can guide you in developing narrative to accompany your own portfolio artifacts by describing situation, task, actions, and results.